Well, hello and welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show. My name is Kenneth McCore for episode 91. How's everybody doing? I hope you're all hanging in during the COVID-19 outbreak pandemic and everybody staying safe. Welcome to this episode where I'm reviewing a model year 2020 Chevy Bolt EV. Uh, awesome car. I want to thank GM Canada for loaning me this uh, press vehicle to uh, play with for a few days and drive around the hills of Caledon here. Uh, today is actually a cooler day. We were at 20 degrees uh, Celsius a couple of days ago and now we're hanging around eight or seven with potentially some snow flurries in the mix. You know, for middle of May folks, if somebody's saying climate change isn't real, I don't know what is because I've never seen these kind of temperatures at May. But anyway, I digress. Let me get to talking about the car here. And thank you for tuning in to this episode. Now, for the 2020 model year, the Bolt EV retains most of its core elements from its previous years. Um, it's not a full year refresh. Uh, there are two trim levels that are available in the Bolt EV, at least in, in North America. There are the LT and the Premier trim level. My tester is a Premier in a lovely Oasis blue. My gain model year 2020. It's a five door uh, hatchback wagon. Uh, GM calls it a wagon. And it's a fully electric battery electric vehicle. Uh, a BEV as we call it. So great car. So for 2020, some of the updates included some small changes to standard and optional equipment. You'll have to go through the listing to figure out what all those are. Now the main change for this model year is improved battery chemistry. They've uh, gained about 24 miles or 34 kilometers in range by tweaking the chemistry. It's still a 66 kilowatt battery pack, but with some additional uh, tweaking and chemistry able to get more energy density out of the battery pack. Now that provides an EPA estimate range of 417 kilometers or 259 miles, about a 10% range boost just by doing that chemistry tweak. Also in this new model year, or in this uh, mid-year, I guess, uh, mid-model refresh, um, there is uh, some higher definition rear view and surround view cameras. And of course, again, this is still relatively the same vehicle that was introduced back in 2017 when the Bolt came out. Let's look at the exterior a little bit. You know, it's about a foot shorter than my Nissan Leaf, uh, but slightly taller, as you can see in this picture here. Uh, it's front-wheel drive vehicle uh, only, 200 horsepower, 150 kilowatts of power, 266 pound-feet of torque, uh, 360 newton meter as well, giving you a 0 to 60 or a 0 to 100 or so kilometers per hour in about 6.3 seconds. Now it does support 7.2 kilowatt onboard uh, level 1, level 2 AC charging uh, via the J1772 port also supports level two higher speeds, DC fast charging, CCS combo, plug of up to 55 kilowatts. And I'll talk a little bit about that uh, near the end of the show. For suspension, it has front independent and rear semi-independent suspension. Now stopping power comes from four wheel disc brakes. They have 11 inch in the front and 10 inch in the rear. Of course, it has regenerative braking. 17 inch wheels with P21750R17 tires. Uh, the ones on this vehicle are all season Michelin self seal tires. Now, one thing that this vehicle does not have is full LED headlights. It has HID headlights with LED stop and tail lamps, but disappointingly a little bit regular bulb turn signals, which I kind of find weird why they mix that up. Either you kind of go all LED or you don't. And I know Nissan on the Leaf has I'll use the word cheaped out a little bit with some of their bulbs. It's kind of disappointing, you know, for a couple of cents, probably less than they're paying for these bulbs in quantity, uh, you know, give you LED all around. But anyway, that's my little beef on that one. If we look at the interior, of course, it's five passenger seating. It's got a leatherette type of material on it. Now, one thing that's disappointing in this vehicle of this type of price, uh, the pricing point, is that it does not offer any power seats. This is the premier top of the line model, as I mentioned. Uh, they all, they are, all in the front six-way adjustable manual for both the driver and the passenger. So you can find a comfortable driving position, but I would have liked to see power seats at least for the driver on this vehicle at that price point. Rear is your standard 60-40 split folding with a center folding armrest and a flat rear floor, which is nice and convenient. Uh, front and rear seats. Now the front seats are heated by standard. Rear seats with the optional premier package are also heated. And of course, the beloved heated steering wheel for our cold climates like it's today. I'm using it today, folks, believe it or not. Almost middle of May and I'm turning the heat on. It's got child seat anchors, of course, as standard. Uh, four USB ports, two in the front and two for the rear passengers with an aux port as well. It's got two screens, eight inch screen for the driver's binnacle 
and a 10.2 inch uh, color screen for the infotainment and I'll uh, walk you through that in a little bit. Lots of storage space for a car in this size, in this class. Um, in the, in, of course, in the doors, the center armrest, which is adjustable. One little thing I liked about that armrest is you can slide it a little bit, uh, Tesla-like, which I thought was pretty cool, and a glove box. Total cargo space is 16.9 cubic feet, or 478 liters with the seats up, all the seats up. And if you drop the uh, rear seats, fold them down, you uh, increase that cargo space to 56.6 cubic feet, or a whopping 1,602 liters. Now safety, you know, EVs and most new cars now are really safe with the amount of appointments that they offer. And this is no less of an example. Standard eight airbags, stability control system with traction control, four wheel anti-lock disc brakes, tire pressure monitoring system, and LED daytime running lights are among the standard safety features. Now, uh, this model has a five-star NHTSA or National Highway Transportation Safety Administration overall rating of, uh, again, five stars, which is really good. Uh, if you uh, go on the website, you can check out all the crash tests and all the scoring there. So pretty good for a car in this class. Uh, nice and safe. Now, standard on the Premier model, but optional on the LT, you can add additional safety features like rear parking sonar, rear cross traffic, and blind spot monitoring and alerting. Additional safety features such as forward collision warning, automatic emergency braking, and lane keeping assist are optional on both trims. You have to buy certain packages on these, and this one comes with the convenience package too, which included those features. Now, standard warranty here in Canada, you'll have to check in your country where these are still available for your specific warranty details, but it should be relatively similar. Bumper to bumper is three years, 60,000 kilometers. Uh, Drivetrain, five years, 100K, 100,000 kilometers, with a rust corrosion of six years, 160,000 kilometers. Battery and electric components, it's your standard across the board, eight years, 160,000. One good thing is that all these vehicles come with uh, roadside assistance free, complimentary by GM Canada for five years or 100,000 kilometers. Now, as you can see from the size of this vehicle, it is, uh, I would say nimble is the word that describes it, and its turning circle is pretty good. Uh, as you can see on the video, it's a 10.8 meter turning cir cir circle or 35 feet. Uh, so pretty good to, uh, to do maneuvering around in the city and dense areas. What we'd like to do is just to see what the cars sound like at slow speeds for the pedestrian audible warnings that they offer. So here the Bolt makes a spaceship type of sound. And here's a video of what it looks like, what it sounds like, excuse me. And by the way, there is no backup beeping sound like I'm used to on my Nissan Leaf. All right, so let's get to some of my driving impressions here in this part of the video. All right, I'll give you some driving impressions of this uh, new model year Chevy Bolt EV. Um, you know, the noise level is fairly quiet. It's registering anywhere from 77, 78 decibels at about highway speeds, close to, let's say 79, make it even. Um, so, which is okay. I think the Leaf is slightly um, quieter. I kind of gauge everything against my Leaf because it's a pretty quiet vehicle. Uh, you know, in, with normal the normal tires that it provides, and, in the, and you know, at highway speeds. Um, overall, you know, comfort is pretty good. It took me a little while to find a comfortable seat position. It does have a telescopic steering wheel and, of course, a tilt, so that's good to find a comfortable position. Uh, everything else, uh, visibility, ergonomics uh, aside, everything else is good on this vehicle uh, from that perspective. Now, being that this uh, is a shorter wheelbase vehicle than, let's say, a pickup truck or an SUV or something, it is a very nimble vehicle. It's easy to steer. The steering's uh, fairly responsive, even though this has economy tires on it for a maximizing range. I find the, the uh, suspension over bumps a, just a tad rougher than I would get on the Leaf. Um, it's a little more jolty here in the Bolt, <laughs> uh, but it, you know, does the job. Um, again, there was a good bump I just went over. Um, you know, the brakes are fine. Now, regenerative braking, I've noticed um, it doesn't really have many choices. It has your drive mode, and then it has what's an L, which is uh, basically your one-pedal driving. Um, uh, if you leave it in L mode, it will stop you, 
and it will hold you at a stop. Um, but so that works pretty good. In fact, um, again, I compare everything to Nissan's uh, Pro, um, e pedal because it works really well, and this is just as good. Probably, actually, even maybe slightly better. Uh, you can modulate this a little bit better, uh, just ever so slightly. It's hard to hard to say, but it does work very well for one pedal driving. So you can accelerate and decelerate, and it gives you maximum regeneration. It has creep automatically creep mode. It'll move you forward, give you that sensation that you're in a regular automatic vehicle. As far as all the other controls go, everything is easily accessible. Didn't take me long to figure out what controls what. Climate controls are very easy to figure out, work very well. You know, I do like the infotainment system. It's a nice big screen. Now the angle of the screen is a little, it's a little different. I guess it depends where you're sitting. It's not that terrible to see. I would like it just to pitch a little bit more towards the driver. Um, but rather than flatter down, uh, but anyway, that's the way GM did it. Otherwise, all the controls are easy to read. You know, plastics, blah, blah, blah. You've seen all the reviews on this car as far as the material, so I'm not gonna go through all that. I think it's fine. Yes, it's a $53,000 vehicle in Canada, so I would expect less hard plastics, but that's just the way everything's coming nowadays, so we have to accept it. Um, as far as, you know, the drivability, as I mentioned, it's very easy to drive, no issues. Um, the range so far has been great. Um, I'll give you a range recap uh, at the end, uh, later on at the end, uh, as I gather more data. I'm actually on my way to go do a fast charge and see what it'll pull, and I'll get that for you. But all in all, it's a very easy and pleasant car to drive. Uh, I've been driving enough for three days, haven't had to even think about charging. Um, I'm just going to charge just to test the pull. Now, one thing I did want to comment on is, is, is it doesn't have built-in nav. Now, it does have uh, OnStar nav, and I haven't tried it, but I believe that you need a subscription for that um, to, in order to get that feature. And they may give it to you free for a period of time, but I believe that you will have to pay for that. And as such, I believe the nav is something you'd have to pay for. I, I think what, they're, what GM is thinking is that most people have cell phones now. They'll use either Android or... Um, or uh, Apple CarPlay to connect their cell phones and use the map app. So just wanted to show you the lane assist here on the uh, Chevy Volt EV. Um, I've got it set to a lane assist and it's on cruise control. It does not have adaptive cruise and so as you can see there's a green light on the dash. Now it drifts over, it goes red and it corrects back um, but it corrects pretty hard. I'm actually almost having to manually intervene on that one. Um, so let me try it here on this bit of a straightaway stretch and uh, see what it looks like. So I've let go of the wheel. It's drifting right. Um, so now it's correcting as you can see. And it tends to overcorrect. Goes to the other side, left, and now it goes back right. And uh, it's going to... So I did not touch the wheel. It overcorrected. But it's, it's ping-ponging pretty seriously back and forth here on the lane assist and I've tried this a few times on some different roads uh, even some flatter sections um, with well marked lanes like these are as you can see and it does the same thing um, I don't know it's uh, not a very good system compared to the Leaf I'll have to tell you which is really really good for a single camera and of course Tesla's is much better but anyway that's the lane assist um, something that I probably wouldn't use a lot of on the Chevy Bolt based on the ping-ponging that it does all right, here are my favorite uh, fast charger, Petro Canada here in Milton with the uh, Chevy Volt, and I'm going, Bolt, excuse me. Oh, I've been driving for a couple hours, so I get a little tired, so I'm gonna plug it in, see what it'll pull. All right, so I've started the charge here at 29%. Uh, it's pulling 41 kilowatts. Now, I'm at a CCS-capable uh, charger that goes up to 200 kilowatts, one of the newer ultra-fast ones here at Petro Canada. So it's starting to pull at 41. Hopefully you could see that okay. I'll continue to monitor and I'll see what the uh, the best um, speed that I can pull out of this as it starts to creep its way up. It looks like it's gonna try to creep up there. Anyway, temperature outside here is about uh, 15, let's say 14 degrees C Celsius. So it's not that cold, not that warm. It's actually a decent temperature. And uh, I'll come back and I'll see what I pull. So I'm just checking back on this charge, and uh, yeah, you know, it's 42, 43 is what it seems to be pulling. I'm just under 50%, as you can see, up uh, to about 180 kilometer range. Um, the screen itself, they don't give you a lot of information on the screens here. Um, this showing where how I'm charging right now. It can charge in increments with target charge level. As you can see here, you can go down a little bit and go up as much as you want uh, within that range. 
Uh, so showing my current range and projected range if I charge to full at the, these temperatures. It's actually 16 degrees out, so a little warmer than I thought. So not a bad day at all, it's turning out to be. Um, but yeah, it doesn't really give you a whole lot of information. This is just efficiency history that I've been driving so far. Um, again, of how it's used the energy. Uh, it's used 97% for driving and accessories, 3% for climate because it's been a nice day. So I've just had the outside fan on and bad, no battery conditioning because it's not cold. How much energy has been used to do 286 kilometers since I picked up the car at 100%. It used 46 kilowatt hours of energy to do that almost 300 kilometers. Uh, so not too shabby at all. So it looks like I'm, my, my charging is past the 50% mark. I've got over 200 kilometers. Looks like the best I can pull is just 41, 42 kilowatts. I'm not sure why. So I'm going to stop it now and uh, go back home. So hope that was helpful. As far as the infotainment and the displays goes, as I mentioned, they're pretty adequate. This is kind of the main home screen where it gives you a summary. You can customize the look of this to change it to different, uh, different elements. Um, your main screen here, of course, there's no other screens. This is only the one screen you get. Um, so you, you can settings, you can low power mode, uh, OnStar, all that kind of stuff, which I didn't really play with OnStar. Uh, this, do, this does come with 4G LTE uh, capabilities and a Wi-Fi hotspot in the vehicle, which is offered by GM. So I do actually have my phone connected by Wi-Fi to the hotspot in the car. One thing I do like about this a plus is the cameras. It's got a really nice camera system where you can get uh, this is forward-looking view, and of course it's got a, a, a quarter view of the parking spot that I'm in uh, that I can use, look at a rear view here uh, as well, uh, the same car with sensors, it'll beep, 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 and all that stuff. Um, I can look at this, and then I can uh, zoom in if I want to, to different angles, to the rear and uh, to the front, to, if I'm looking down to see how close I am to something. Um, this, is a, this is a split of the uh, side views, where you can see the right side of the vehicle and the left side of the vehicle if you're coming close to curbs or whatever. Uh, this will activate the um, uh, the proximity range, the bars, when you're backing up a Ford. And then this gives you a, a capability for all around views. All right, well, I hope you found the video and the charging video uh, informative and educational. Now, get the pricing on these vehicles. Of course, we haven't hit cost parity yet, so the Bolt is still priced relatively high compared to other vehicles uh, within, uh, within an uh, internal combustion price point, if you wanted to compare that to. Here in Canada, the base MSRP is $50,298 on the Premier Edition. Uh, uh, the other safety features, unfortunately, you can't itemize it out. They are pretty important, certainly the AEB, uh, which really should be standard uh, by now, folks. Uh, so I'm a little disappointed in that. So total price Pricing before tax here in Canada is $52,993. Now the good is that this vehicle does qualify for the $5,000 Canadian federal EV incentive rebate. And also, uh, as I've reported on some past shows, GM and their dealers seem to be aggressively offering discounts on these in the US. So you could get one at a pretty good bargaini of a price. So my overall pros and cons of this vehicle, I gotta hold on to my papers because there's wind and it's so cold here, folks. Um, you know, it, it, it's impressive with the range. I mean, you know, I've had this for a few days. I haven't really had an opportunity to really take it for an extended drive. I did drive a couple of hundred kilometers in one day to try to lower it so I could do that charging for you that you saw earlier. But you know, at an EPA uh, range of 417 kilometers, I'm quite confident that I can get 400 kilometers on this vehicle. I mean, even now in these cooler temperatures, it's showing a maximum of 408. Uh, when I pulled it out of the, the garage fully charged this morning. So that is pretty good and with a nice easy driving, uh, you can certainly get into the 350 to 400K range without any issues. Highways, of course, it's gonna be a little less. And of course, as the weather gets colder, it's going to be a little less as well. Now, the faster DC charging um, under different ambient uh, temperatures that GM has claimed that they've improved for this vehicle are good. It, what that means is that it accepts full power for longer periods of time than it did in the previous models. Uh, however, that really is a lower rate than most of the second gen and newer electric vehicles that we're seeing on the road now. I mean, even the Nissan Leaf uh, pulls more than this, you know, because this is topped at 55 kilowatts, which is, um, you know, not really at par for, for the size of the battery. You know, if you're trying to get that 80% in 30 minute experience, 
it's going to be tough to get with this vehicle uh, depending on what your your starting state of charge is so you know uh, it should be really uh, able to accept something in the area of 75 kilowatts or even higher maybe up to 100 by now especially on this refresh model or partly refresh so GM should really work on that the cabin is spacious it's pretty roomy I've had four people in here no problem in space um, it's got good acceleration as all EVs do and it's as I mentioned very nimble for handling in the city I'm not really hung up on hard plastics and all this stuff like a lot of the other reviewers I don't really care I just get in the car I want it to be functional but you know I would like it to I, I think the materials could be a little better now there's a lot of talk about the bolts with their front seats and you know really seating and I tell everybody about the ergonomics of vehicles it's a very personal choice so you depending on your body style your size height weight all that kind of stuff it's going to be different for everybody so you really have to get in and try the most common complaint I hear about this vehicle is the lack of support and comfort for the front seat, especially over long periods of time and over long trips, um, that they tend to be narrow and lack cushion depth. Now, I found them to be okay, but folks, again, I'm only driving this for a few days, and uh, since then, you know, I haven't really had any issues with it, so maybe over the long term I might, because I'm not the smallest fish in the pond, that's for sure. Um, so, you know, we'll have to wait and see, but that's subjective. But the, And the ride comfort, I thought, could have been a bit better it does lose its polish on rougher roads you know um, I think that they should have gone to a little bit better rear suspension setup to be able to cushion that it is a little rougher than I'd like it to be especially when you throw some people in there the touchscreen is a bit disappointing you know it doesn't have any built-in navigation and again we're talking about a vehicle that's in the mid fifty thousand dollar Canadian price range this is not an inexpensive vehicle it should have built-in maps now another good thing about the Bolt is that it is available nationwide and of course it has a large dealer network to support it all right, so in my closing, this is really a thumbs up vehicle. I do like it a lot. The range is really the winner for me on this vehicle, and it drives very, very, very well. So GM's done a great job on the Bolt. There could be some room for improvements, and I'm sure when we see the, the next generation of the Bolt in the uh, EUV, I believe that they're calling it, or whatever, CUV, I don't know anymore, so many acronyms, we'll probably see some of the things that I'm picking out here in that new model. But again, I do want to thank GM for loaning me the tester vehicle. And uh, yeah, big thumbs up on this vehicle. If you're in the market, you can really get some good deals, especially in the U.S. on this. And maybe even up here, you might be able to haggle a bit with the dealers now that right now that the times are slow. All right, and that's it for this edition of the EV Revolution show, where I'm trying to educate minds one tailpipe at a time. I hope I've been able to add a little bit more education on this uh, model of the Chevy Volt. Thanks, everybody, for watching me on YouTube, for liking, subscribing. If you haven't subscribed, please do. Uh, it means a lot to, uh, to increase subscriber, and so I can do more and provide more content for you. Of course, humble thanks to my Patreon supporters. You know who you are. Appreciate that. If you're not sure what it is, check out the website here at the link. Even a dollar a month can make a difference to help me support the show continue to grow hope everybody's staying safe please uh, follow your public health guidelines wherever you live around the world stay safe we are getting through this we are starting to see a little bit of a light at the end of the tunnel here and let's just continue to do what uh, people need us to do stay positive uh, as i mentioned keep watching and look out for all the ev stuff because it is a fascinating world that continues to advance so again thank you very much for taking the time to watch me and until the next time that i bring out a show again everybody stay safe and i'll see you when i see you take care bye bye all right and that's it for this edition let me try that again um, it's a little more jolty here in the bolt, <laughs> uh, but it, you know, does the job. Um, again, there was a good bump I just went over, kind of. Keep it rolling. Let's just change the angle. <laughs>